All right, so today we're gonna show you how to narrow a Ford 88 rear end. So I'm gonna go from start to finish on what I do when I narrow a rear end. I do have the jig for this one. I know I already showed you the way that you can cheat it and not use a jig. That's kind of the cheaper way to go, but this way, is also a great way to do it so either way if you guys want to spring and spend the money for the jig that's fine too so I'm gonna show you how I do it with the jig so here's the Ford Explorer rear end this one was brought to me by a customer and I'm gonna be narrowing one side to match the other side as you can see the driver's side is shorter than the passenger side so what we're going to do is narrow the passenger side to match the driver's side the good part about doing that is we can just swap a axle from the driver's side over to the passenger side without having to buy new axles so because this is going in an s10 we're also going to have to be moving the spring purges to fit an s10 i've i know some people leave the stock explorer ones on but i think they're about an inch too wide and you can stretch it to fit but we're just going to replace them with new ones so that's what we're going to start with so first we're going to get this axle moved so that we can get all the measurements we need to know where to put these as far as on the tube all right so what i'm doing now is clocking the rear end so i can get the right location for the spring purchase so what i'm going to do I got a I got an angle finder here and I have another digital angle finder here. So all I'm going to do is spin this rear end until this angle finder reads 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So I got 90 degrees on this angle finder. Now I'm going to look at this one and see what I'm at. Still at 90. I got 9.7. So I know when I put these back on, they, when this is at 90 degrees, we have to clock these at 9.7 degrees. So now that we got all that figured out, we can get all the stuff cut off the rear axle and get it cleaned up. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'll come back to you when that's all done. I got the spring purges ground off, just like I said I was gonna do. Now we're gonna get the bearings out of the end. There's an outside seal, and then there's a bearing inside that. They do make fancy seal removers, but this is my fancy seal remover. Uh, it's still a pain in the butt, so we're going to do that now, and then we're going to pull the bearing out. kind of work it around. You gotta replace this regardless so it doesn't matter if you wreck it. junk. Now there's a bearing in here. 
We're gonna pull the bearings out. I'll show you how to do that. You need a bearing puller and a slide hammer. So let's do that next. So this is what a bearing puller looks like for rear ends. You get, usually get them in a three pack. There's different sizes. So how you size it is you want it to go slide in and then be able to pull it back tight. What you want to do then, tighten your nut. Make sure it's centered in there. And you put your slide hammer on it. So now that we got all the bearings out, we're gonna find out how much we need to narrow this thing. I have a fancy jig that I put on here that I measure from the center of the pinion, but since I'm showing you guys how to do it, I'm just gonna measure it like I would if I didn't have that. So first we're gonna measure this side, 17 and an eighth. measure this side exactly 20 inches where we're measuring from is where the, the pipe slides into the rear end housing into the cast to the flange on the edge of the with the brakes mount so that means we need to take two and seven eighths out of the longer side so now we're gonna kind of look at the axle here and figure out where we exactly want to take out that measurement. So if we look at this axle tube, kind of tilts down here at the end, so we don't want it. We know we don't want to take it out here. This is pretty much all straight out here. So I would say somewhere in here we're gonna take that out of it. We're just kind of take a ruler and just kind of measure it out to a good point, which is 12 inches, which is right about here. So we'll cut this off at 12 inches and then we'll take off our 2 and 7 eighths off the tube and then we'll weld it back together. So as you can see, we got the bar in here. We got a machine puck on that end. Put an inch and a quarter bar through it. And then there's two machine pucks in the axle, or in the housing. And then we have the end that we chopped. And as you can see, I got indication marks on the axle tube and the part I cut so that when we put them together and weld it, it is indicated in the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in spot and get ready to tack it up.
So I got my lines lined up here. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack it together. which it is, and I, I have my other protractor here. So what I'm gonna do is clock these at 9.7, which was the same that I had from the stock purchase. We just essentially widened them out a little bit to, to fit on the under the S10. So I got my welder ready. I got my lines drawn on the axle. So we're gonna lean these back to 9.7. And then give her a 10.
Now they should be ready to weld on, and we'll be all done with the axle. I hope I helped you guys out for you guys wanting to narrow these axles. It's not super difficult, you just need to pay attention to measurements. Take your time welding. I hope you guys want to go out in your shop and uh, try to tackle this project. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Any questions, hit me up in the comments. Peace, guys.